Good morning and happy new year and a training vlog with a difference today because I've done almost no training at all, have eaten a humongous amount of food and yet because of those two things am perfectly placed for my next big race tomorrow as I'll explain in a moment. What training have I done? Well after my climb up Alp de Zwift on Christmas Eve in under an hour I thought I deserved a little bit of a rest. So I did a 5k run on Christmas Day, a little family tradition we have going on. <laughs> 5k, it was 5k. They look like they've run an ultra marathon. Do you know George? Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> and then just spent the last seven days walking the dog. What impact does doing absolutely nothing for a week have? I'll find out in a moment because I'm gonna jump on the bike and do a quick Zwift ride shortly. I feel heavy but well rested right now. So I'm gonna say somewhere between excellence and death. That's my prediction. So in the absence of any training to report on, I'm gonna answer a few questions that got thrown up when I asked if anybody had any a couple of weeks ago. But first, everybody's favorite question, what did I get for Christmas? Actually, the first present I got was at 2.07 a.m. on Christmas morning. I know because I stayed up to see it happen. This channel hit 5,000 subscribers. As many of you will know, I had bet my children that I would get to 5K before the end of the year. So to do it on Christmas day and to be able to wake them up with that news was a beautiful thing. I only wish I'd been more confident that I'd have achieved it. I'd have gone ahead and ordered them some Christmas t-shirts to celebrate. Still, there is always 10K by Easter. Make that happen. And then Jenna got me these. Ultra Lone Peak 4 boots. The fully waterproof boot version of my favorite trail running shoe, the Ultra Lone Peak 4. She may have only gotten for me to encourage me on more boring walks in the countryside with her, but either way, very, very cool. But I had that covered because I got her a Garmin Fenix 6S in rose gold and white, although I expect Garmin called it something else other than white. That's bone. No more messing about with an Apple Watch for her. And I thought that was it, but no, from behind the Christmas tree, she pulled out this. This is something that I had seen when it got launched earlier this year. Missed my chance to get one. Before I know it, all sold out. Collector's item overnight. I'd given up. Somehow, she found one. That is a G-Shock Frogman Borneo Rainbow Toad Special Edition. Very above average. The kids think it looks completely ridiculous, but I have a solution to that. Very, very cool indeed. I cannot imagine what she had to do to get that. Actually, I can imagine what she had to do, but my camera gear hasn't been touched and she would have let slip if she had an OnlyFans account so it remains a mystery. Okay, Q and A. I knew this week was gonna be light on training, so I put up a post a couple of weeks ago saying, hey, any questions, ask me. Some people did, let's blast through them. Steve says, climbing out to Zwift, did you change the trainer difficulty at all? Trainer difficulty is, the simplest way of explaining it, is it alters the gearing on the bike relative to the terrain you're riding on so that you feel climbs less. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, you still need the same amount of wattage to get up a climb, but you're able to spin up the pedals to generate it in an easier way than if the hill was very realistic where you'd be grinding away. Uh, yes, I do change it from the standard, which is 50%. I change it to 75%. He goes the other way to 30%. I don't know why really, I just find it fits my pedaling cadence style. My bro science tells me that as long as I don't run out of cogs available above and below the ones that I'm in most of the time, I'm probably at the right sort of gearing, who knows. Dark Flame Jam, favorite dinosaur as what? As a pet, as a, as a thing to go and see in the zoo, to meet, insufficient context. Next, how long before you can no longer call yourself a cycling noob? Good question. I'm thinking I might be done. Last year, it was true that I was a newbie and it's also very clickbaity to say it. So the holy grail of the YouTube search engine. But I'm now, I'm only six months in, so I'm still, I'm gonna go from now on with novice. My picture was in a video a couple of weeks ago. Can I get royalties? No. Okay. Gregory, what is the target time for your Iron Man and a breakdown of weight? You think it'd be faster and slower. What is your job? Why did you change your lifestyle? 
Uh, target time for the Ironman is going to be 12 hours. I'm thinking a four hour run seems feasible after all that. And that's about as far as I've got really. I know that a 12 hour time is regarded as being an okay time. It's more than just completing an Ironman. You have had to train for that and you've, you know, you've pushed on, uh, especially at my size. The swim's going to be the worst part for me. Uh, the bike will be the best, I think. Uh, I'm on a pretty fast bike and I'm reasonably powerful on a flat course that I'll be on, so that's my plan. Uh, what's my job? People ask my job all the time, I don't know why. Um, I advise and assist people with uh, taxation and investments and trust planning for the most part. It is a very different world to all this. It is a world that allowed me and encouraged me pretty much to get very, very out of shape. But it's also a world that allows me to buy the toys that I now use to get in shape. Obviously it has no similarities to anything I do here, other than I do try and squeeze in as many funny one-liners as possible. Why did you change from unhealthy to healthy? Good question, probably a video in itself. Here's the short version. I was in a relationship with a status best described as fragile. So I bought myself a self-help book on relationships and it was horrific, appalling book from start to finish all sorts of nasty alpha male gibberish, apart from one paragraph on health and fitness. It basically said, you should improve your health and fitness because it might help your relationship. And if it doesn't and your relationship fails, you'll be glad that you improved your health and fitness. And it just clicked for me. In a broader sense, it doesn't matter what is happening in your life that you are thinking is not going the way you want it to, whether it's a, a situation with work or family or relationships or your health, whatever it might be. Improving your fitness, your health, how you look, cannot possibly hurt that scenario. And it could well make it better. And long term, no matter what happens, no matter how things play out, you not being a bag of shit in the future can only be a good thing. It's a pretty simple concept obviously, but sometimes you just need that brutally simple message thrust into your face before you realize and it clicks with you that it was obvious all along, even if it comes in the form of a single paragraph in a book that was otherwise complete pants. Uh, Boris says, what do you eat in a typical day besides donuts? Donuts. Tiffin cookie. I will do one of those videos. I'm always a little bit hesitant to do the specifics of what I eat and how I train. I am not an expert in any of this, and so following what I do too closely might prove to be pretty suboptimal for you. In fact, it's probably pretty suboptimal for me sometimes. My message is not so much, here's what I'm doing, you should do it that way too. It's more, here's what I'm doing with a particular mindset and a particular approach and an attitude. And you might want to try a similar approach because it might help you get results in whatever it is you want to do, which might be completely different to what I'm doing. It's more about how I'm doing it uh, rather than how I'm doing it. That makes no sense. Hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. But I get the appeal of such things and I will do something along those lines in the near future. Uh, Adrian says, what stats do you have on your Garmin during activity? How do you gauge if you're doing good or bad? Good question. My Garmin Fenix 6X, uh, first of all, it's it's rocking there on the main display, a little homage to Arnold's Seiko H558 from Commando. Don't disturb my friend, he's dead tired. And then in terms of the display screens that I have when I'm actually running, I keep it very, very simple. On the first display, I have my distance, my average pace for the whole event, and my time for the whole event. That's it. And that's 99% of the time, all I'm looking at. Second screen, my watch is set to auto lap every one kilometre, so I have it displaying the lap distance for that current lap, the lap time, the lap pace, and my heart rate. Third screen is then my heart rate monitor because occasionally I run runs based purely on heart rate effort. And that's it, I have those three screens most of the time, in fact nearly all the time. What I'll sometimes do is add to them. So if I'm going after a particular set time over a distance, I'll use the Pace Pro feature, if I'm running off road, I might have the map downloaded into there so I can see what's coming up geographically. But nine times out of 10, I'm just using that really simple information on the front couple of screens. How far have I gone? How long have I been going for? And what is my pace? And pace answers the other question, what I use to gauge how well I'm doing, pace all the time. Especially, or unless it's a, a really weird terrain off road, hills and climbs and stuff, I know what my pace should be looking like. I know if I'm doing a fast 10K and I'm looking at a time that's, I don't know, 4.35s north of that, that's not a fast 10K and I can adjust accordingly. Either pick up the pace 
or reassess whether that run that day is going to be a fast run or not. What was his other question? How do you pay for your toys? Already answered it. I tell one-liners to people far more interested in other things normally. Okay, and the ne next two questions actually both about the gym. Uh, how do you fit the gym in? Do you do deadlifts and cleans? And the next guy wanted to know, yeah, is it a priority? How often do you train? Are you worried about losing mass because of the amount of cardio? Uh, yes, to pretty much all those. I do do deadlifts. I do some cleans. I don't do much that involves throwing the barbell around. I've never been taught proper technique for such things. And once you start chucking it around in the air, you should probably know what you're doing. But deadlifts, certainly typical bro gym stuff I'm doing most of the time. And it is a nightmare to fit it in. And it conflicts completely with the Ironman training. Less so with just running. I could happily do training for 10K runs, even half marathons, and be very happy with what I was doing in the gym. But the gym training and the Ironman stuff, they just, they butt heads really. It is nigh on impossible, I would think, to increase muscle size and train for an Ironman. My only real objective is to try and maintain a degree of size and train for the Ironman. Bottom line, they conflict against each other. There's no, there's no way around it, really. Um, it's a nightmare. It requires an awful lot of diary planning and time and effort. Um, having said all that, I believe that the result is worth it. I am not going to be ever the strongest person in the gym while trying to be an Ironman, and I'm not ever going to be the fastest on a triathlon of any sort if I'm also going to the gym and lifting heavy weights up and down. But I don't mind. I can deadlift more than most marathon runners, and there are not many gym monkeys that are going to do a sub 20 minute 5K. So I'm happy with where it leaves me. I will do a video on the weights and fitting in stuff uh, coming soon. Did you drink and smoke when you were younger? I've never drunk, really. I don't not drink. Um, I've rattled through some chocolate Baileys last few days, but I've just never got into it, really. I, do, I'm, I can drink, but I choose not to. Um, smoking. Yeah, I smoked for about a month in, I think it was about 1992, maybe. I was about 17 or 18. Um, I was set up on a blind date with someone. I was told two things about her. She was hot and smoked. Uh, I thought, I should buy my first ever pack of cigarettes and learn to smoke so that when we went out, we're going to watch a movie. I don't look like an idiot and I can smoke when she smokes. Um, and that'll impress her, I thought. And then on the way to the movie, I discovered that the information I'd been given that she was a hot smoker was half right. She smoked. I thought, that doesn't matter. At least I don't have to smoke the rest of these cigarettes because it's disgusting. I came out from having watched Reservoir Dogs that night and spent the next four weeks smoking solidly because I wanted to be Michael Madsen. I also wore sunglasses all the time, walked in slow motion and asked people to call me Mr. Blonde. Luckily, I got over it because a few weeks later I went to see another movie and decided I wanted to do martial arts. You like that shit? Wesley Snipes, Passenger 57. I didn't last long either. Uh, last question was... Oh yeah, this guy, the heart transplant guy. This guy weighed, Dennis, weighed over 200 kilograms. That's like 450 pounds or something, isn't it? That's insane. Um, I had a heart transplant and is now gonna run an Ironman in September of this year. Uh, fair play, mate. Um, staggered. People sometimes say, don't they? Oh, it was always better back in the day and I, I wish I you know, could have been born you know, years ago when times were better. Uh, no. Uh, I will always pick right now, please, with all the modern science and medicine that goes with right now. That is um, pretty cool. The question he asks is, he's not gonna get his TT bike until next February, and should he practice riding the TT bike because of the position or use his indoor bike? I am only a novice, uh, certainly not an expert. My thinking is, yes, you need to practice on the TT bike. Having said that, you get it in February and your race is in September. That still seems like a chunk of time to get used to the position on. What I'm doing is I'm using the Wahoo Kicker Bike to do a lot of my fitness training, but I am sitting on the TT bike out on the road because the position on it is so different. And I, I would, it would be no use me being incredibly fit from the indoor bike and then jumping on the TT bike and being very fit to ride it, but getting a bad back or a bad neck, whatever it might be. So my advice is get yourself your bike as soon as you can, get a good bike fit on it, and then use it. I wouldn't have thought February to September was, an, was, a, was too short a time to get comfortable on the bike, as long as you're keeping your fitness up on the indoor bike. What I actually did 
was bought. I don't know if the camera can see it. I have a little tax indoor trainer thing back there that I use for the TT bike. Not really for any purpose other than being able to sit in here in the dry, in the warm-ish and get used to that position. So if your weather is still bad when you get the bike in February, maybe a cheap, simple indoor trainer, not to really nail your fitness down with, but just to get used to that position. And fair play, that's a, that is quite an achievement. Um, okay, so Q&A over, tomorrow's race. Let's go back a step, it is Christmas Eve. I'd done the Outlaw Zwift ride in under the hour. I'm now settling down for the annual tradition of watching the Seth Rogen starring masterpiece, The Night Before. The kids are gathering their movie snacks. They look very, very tasty. But I'm telling myself, no, be sensible, you don't need that. And then somebody mentions online a big downhill race taking place January the 3rd on Zwift. A race I'd heard about but not really paid much attention to. A quick Google and it turns out that the heavier you are, the faster you ride downhill. Surrounded by 400,000 calories of junk food, that is very dangerous information. And so an idea was born, an idea to allow my weight to creep up so that I could fly down the hill. And so on Christmas Eve, I was a fraction under 101 kilograms. I am today about 108 kilograms. Will that translate in tomorrow's race to either increased speed or reduced wattage for the same speed, thus allowing me to retain energy for a sprint finish? I really hope so. Will it allow me in a minute to get on the bike without snapping the rocker plate? I really hope so. Let's find out. Oh dear. Little race there and it seems my heart rate is now higher, my wattage is now lower, and my proximity to any podiums is distant to say the least. Even worse, Zwift have taken the new weight I gave for my avatar and swollen him to ridiculous proportions. I haven't seen a negative reaction to a little weight gain that bad since, probably since I jumped into a car 30 years ago to head off and watch Reservoir Dogs. Whether the weight gain there translates nicely tomorrow into the downhill race, I have no idea. I might have to literally cycle off the edge of a cliff to take real advantage of it. We will see. That will be the next video. And then the one after that is gonna be on the fastest way possible to lose eight kilograms, because I've been informed by Jenna that if I do not lose the extra weight by the middle of January, then not only does the watch go back, but if I want anything more, I have to subscribe like everybody else. Whatever that means.